Hey, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, David Emily here. I uh, just went over the plurality thing for Harvard CS50, and I wanted to go over with you. Um, so you could kind of hear my thoughts on how I approached it and uh, what I did to solve it. So I just created a new version of it. I did the wget um, to pull down the code. Um, really cool thing about this problem is they start out with the code for you. So it's much kind of like you would at a um, software development job. Not always are you starting out with new systems. Sometimes you're modifying old ones. Um, so that's cool. I, I love that they did that. Uh, it's kind of exciting for me. So um, pulling it down, uh, we're creating a voting machine. So we vote, we put in names, and then we count those votes, and then everybody with the max votes we will um, print out. So uh, pulling it down, I'm just kind of going over the code real quick. Uh, probably where we want to start, what we want to look at. It looks like they create a structure here. So for those that may have skipped the lecture or forgot about the lecture or skipped the walkthrough, um, this is like creating our own type. So the structure uh, inside this container, we now have a name, which is a string, and the votes, which is, which is an integer. So instead of just having an integer over here and like a structure over, or a string over here, they're now under one. So we will access that under the same thing. And then using this new can this type, this new structure candidate, we put that in an array of candidates. Um, so we have an array of candidate, an array of candidate type called candidates, um, and it's using this up here. They define the max as nine. So the candidates array goes up to nine candidates, um, and then we have account, um, and then we have the function prototypes. So that kind of tells us the functions we will be working on. Um, we'll be working on a vote method or function that takes in a string called name and returns a bool and then a print winner method which takes nothing and returns nothing. Um, this is all doable because any thing uh, mentioned outside of main exists globally. So we won't have to pass this array of candidates around because it's global. So we can access that in all the functions. Uh, we can access um, the name and the votes and everything off that and the candidate count everywhere uh, because outside of main. So the going over the code that pre-exists, um, we don't have to worry about this too much, but it's kind of nice to know what it's doing. Um, it's parsing the command line uh, stuff. Um, it tells you, hey, use just the name and the candidates. Um, if you have over nine candidates that's uh, above max, and it tells you you can't have that many. It then loads all that stuff, loads all the candidates for us into their right. It gets the voter count, so the number of voters, um, and then it pulls in and allows them to vote. And it checks for valid votes. Um, so all that's done for us, sweet. Um, so we pretty much only have to worry about two functions, and that is the vote method or function and the print winner function. Um, so a little bit real quick, the voting is they pass in a name, and we're going to go into that candidate array, find that candidate with that name, and add that votes to them. Um, so let's start off there. We are going to go in... And I believe if that candidate does exist, we return a true. Um, and if it doesn't exist, we return a false. So if the name matches one of them, we add their votes to that vote count and return true. And if it does not match any of them, we don't add it and we return a false. Um, so it's already returning false for us. So we just have to worry about the true. Um, so since the candidate we are working on is an array, we're going to access that candidate just like we would an array of integers or an array of strings, anything like that. Um, so let's go down here. Uh, for int i equals zero, i is less than, I'm going to go grab what they give us, this candidate count. Um, 
I++. Um, so now we are at this level. Um, so we're going to access this by saying candidate I, I'm sorry, candidates I, uh, which will point to specifically one of these. So we're working on each of these, um, and we want to compare the name passed in to the candidate's name. Um, you can do this with just a hard equals. Uh, I prefer to use one of the functions uh, this gives us called string compare or strcmp. Uh, compares two strings, uh, returns an integer less than or equal to or greater than uh, if they're found out to be different. The important thing from here is if the strings are the same, it returns a zero. So knowing that, we can use string compare. Uh, we want the candidate's i, um, the name off that. So let me make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, so just name. Uh, and we want to compare that with the name passed in. And if they're equal, it equals zero. If it equals, uh, we take that same candidate, we uh, are matching on the name, and we know that because that index, that i points to the specific index of that candidate in there. And as I mentioned earlier, that candidate's a container with both the name and the votes. So we can then um, add to the votes. And let me make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so votes plus plus. Um, you can also, you know, uh, do the additional like um, plus equals one, um, whatever you prefer. And then if this happens, we want to return true um, because we found that candidate, we incremented their votes, we have nothing else to do in this function. There's no other candidates we're going to touch because we're doing this name by name. Uh, so we just hard return true there. Sweet. Um, so I think this function is done. I think um, there is a way, don't know if there's a way we can test that individually. Um, so I'm just going to go down with the printer, a uh, print winner. Um, so this takes an avoid and we return a void. So we will be doing the printing here in this method. Uh, the way we're going to do this is it mentions in the other thing. We're going to run through all the candidates. We're going to see what the highest amount of votes for one candidate is, or more than one candidate. And then we are going to print every candidate's name that had that number of votes. So I think there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, the first one in my mind is we create an integer called like max votes, or um, say highest votes. So all it's going to do is it's going to find the highest amount of votes of a candidate. I'm going to set it to negative one because that tells me if there's any, it doesn't make sense for a candidate to have a negative vote. Um, so as soon as we hit any candidates, even if they didn't get any votes, that's going to set that integer. Um, and then we can track that. If at the end of this we have a negative one um, vote, we did something wrong. Uh, so much like how we did earlier, um, we're just going to iterate through um, the stuff. I'm going to copy and paste because I stink at typing. I plus plus. Um, and here, we, if the candidate here has more than the vote, uh, more than the max vote, so I'm going to say, like, if candidates I votes is greater than um, highest votes. And I'm doing a lot of copy and pasting because um, I hate hunting down spelling mistakes. Uh, so if that's true, we now want to set the highest votes as a candidate's votes. And that's it. Um, that's literally all I want to do is just iterate through this list Oh, uh, we start out with negative one. Oh, first candidate has two votes. Let's set that uh, highest amount to two. Oh, the next person has three. Uh, well, three is higher than two. Let's reset that to three. Um, so by the end of this for loop, by the end of line 93, highest votes will have the highest uh, vote of any candidate or candidates in this array. So then we just want to iterate through this again. Um, we can reuse I here. 
uh, because it's outside the scope of the first four loop. Um, so if do I still have this on the clipboard, I do not. Darn. Um, so while this is less than candidate count, I plus plus. We're going to iterate through again, and if the candidate we are on, um, so as we're going through, if their candidates, their the amount of votes equals the highest votes, that means either that candidate has the highest amount of votes or is tied for having the most amount of votes. You just want to print their name out. Um, percent s, not dollar sign s, and then candidates. Um, dot name and uh, I messed up the quotes. I'm going to fix that real quick. Uh, so now we're going to go through and print out every candidate with that name. Um, I think this will work. Um, I haven't actually. I tested. I did this earlier, but I don't remember if this is exactly how I did it. Um, but so I'm going to make this make plurality. I failed, uh, so let's see what I failed on. I have line 73. It expects a parenthesis, that's true. Uh, I deleted that. I'm also going to make this maybe more readable. Um, so string compare this with a name passed in, if that equals zero. Okay, um, so I missed that one. Line 72. Okay, I think that's from before. Line 77. Uh, I think that's also from before. I think that was all just because of that. I forgot to close my parenthesis on the string compare. Uh, but that looks okay now, so I'm going to remake. Uh, it made. I think there is a specific test example that make us run. Come on, no whammies. Oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> may edit some of that out. Um, and we passed all of it. So awesome. We, first time, I think, using these structures, we created a struct, or we used an existing struct, we used a whole existing code base. Uh, we took the struct, we know it took a name, votes, uh, and then down here, um, we counted votes based on name, and then we printed a name based on votes. So we used the structure both ways. Uh, so good job to us, um, yay. Uh, let me know if you did this some way different, or, um, or if you see some way to prove this, maybe refactor it, that'd be awesome. Um, until next time, uh, Take care.